We're back with another small form factor case. Howdy, howdy guys, Bonchato here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Geek, that's spelled with three E's, A30 Mini ITX case. The A30 is an 8.3 liter, very compact Mini ITX case, which is about the size of a regular console. It can support CPU coolers up to 50 millimeters in height and dual slot GPUs up to 211 millimeters in length. And it can handle power supplies up to 180 millimeters long, though you should just stick with a standard Flex ATX power supply. Since that's a well-defined standard, it will fit, and and cable management will be quite a bit easier. The case itself has an aluminum frame, though the rest of it is almost entirely acrylic, so you will have to be kind of careful with scratching and getting dust on it, since acrylic is easy to mess up and kind of hard to clean. It has a fairly standard front panel with a USB 3, USB 2, and microphone and headphone jacks. And it can fit a 2.5 inch drive and either another 2.5 inch or a 3.5 inch drive inside the case. That's quite a bit more storage than most cases of this size. The base version is 50 US dollars, but for $30 more they'll include a light heat 300 millimeter PCIe riser which is guaranteed to fit and 300 millimeter risers are about 30 bucks anyway so it's probably well worth it to go with that now one important thing to note with the a30 is that like most other small form factor cases you pretty much have to assemble it from scratch and that ends up being one of the biggest questions with cases like this how well does it go together so let's take a look at the build process. They do have the nuts in a nice organized container, but each acrylic piece comes with a protective plastic cover on both sides, which you have to painstakingly peel off. That part took about 30 minutes. Anyway, let's get to the assembly. It starts with installing standoffs on the two left side interior panels. The instructions on their website are pretty well annotated, so putting everything in the right mounting hole is fairly straightforward. Next step is to screw the threaded spacer into the 250 millimeter aluminum bar. The acrylic panels are held to the aluminum bars with nuts that fit into the channels in the extrusions. The aluminum is what forms the frame, but the acrylic is what holds it all together. The right side assembly is the same. Lay out the aluminum bars and mount the acrylic panel to them to hold them in place. Once the right side is built, the next step is to mount both side panels to the back panel. This part is a little easier since the ends of the aluminum bars have threaded holes, so you don't need to deal with lining up a nut in the channel. Just make sure the bars you use for the horizontal position have threaded holes. Two of the bars aren't threaded and those are supposed to fit on the upright vertical section. Why they didn't just thread all of the bars, I don't know. Anyway, with the back plate holding the two side panels in place, it's actually starting to look like a computer case. After the back panel comes the base plate, which is held in place like most of the panels with those little nuts. For the sake of brevity here, I'm leaving out most of my fiddling with trying to line up the nuts in the channels. About 90% of the time I spent building the case was spent getting those stupid little nuts to sit properly in the aluminum bars. They do look very clean once installed, but actually getting them installed was a hassle to say the least. All the same, with the base plate installed, you then put in the front panel IO connectors. These mount to the two standoffs at the front of the case and are held in place with two screws. Make sure you check that you installed it correctly by holding up the front panel and seeing that the ports actually line up with the openings. After the front panel I.O. is in place, next you install the power supply. The one I'm using here is an FSP 400-60 FGGBA, which is actually targeted at server or data center use, as you can probably guess by the model name. It's a flex ATX form factor, which is what's required for cases like this. It can deliver 400 watts and it has an 80 plus gold rating for efficiency. It's also one of the few flex ATX power supplies that has an 8-pin PCIe connector, which you'll need if you're going to be using a higher-end graphics card. It does take a little bit of effort to maneuver the power supply and cables into the case, but once it's lined up with the mounting holes in the back, getting the screws threaded is pretty straightforward. And that's what it looks like installed. Neat. At this point, you can install two and a half inch SSD that'll fit on the back side of the lower panel opposite the power supply, but I won't be installing any extra drive since I wanted to go for a cleaner look. After that, the PCIe riser cable gets mounted to the two shorter standoffs near the base. Bending it into an S shape first will make things easier when you're trying to fit the motherboard in. Two screws hold it in place, and now you have a solid mounting spot for the graphics card. The next step is installing the motherboard. This is actually one of the easier parts of the build process. Put the rear IO shield in place and hold it, then just drop the motherboard in and line up the mounting holes with the standoffs. Four screws go in and the motherboard is mounted. At this point, you can install a second two and a half inch or a three and a half inch drive, which will fit into the front of the case. Again, no extra drives for me, but the option is there if you need it. After that, the graphics card goes in, which is also super simple. Just plug it into the already mounted PCIe riser. Quick note before we get to the fan installation, the feet get mounted to the bottom panel with the same screws that hold the fan grill to the top panel. The instructions for the feet weren't labeled very well, so I didn't realize that until this point in the build. 
If you'll be using fans, the installation is fairly easy since it's done outside the case. First, figure out which way you want the wires to come out, then line up the mesh and fan with the mounting holes in the top panel. Once you've done this for both fans, the fan grill fits in place on top of them and gets held down with six small screws. After the fans are in place, you mount the top panel with the screws and nuts that fit into the channels on the aluminum. Another tedious process, but by this point in the build, you'll have a pretty good idea of how to get them to line up. With the top panel installed, next you get the front panel ready by installing the power switch. Before installing the front panel, though, I went ahead and started plugging everything in and managing the cables inside the case. If you do install drive at the front of the case, especially a three and a half inch hard drive, you'll have a much harder time dealing with all the cables. But without the drive there, you have plenty of room to shove all the power supply cables and extra length from the front panel headers. With that all taken care of, now you can install the front panel. It's just a matter of lining up the openings for the front I.O. and screwing it in place with the six mounting holes. The last step inside the case is to put in the power supply shroud, which slides in on top of the power supply and fits close enough to the case that it'll stay in place by itself. And finally, the last part of the build process is installing the side panels. These are much easier to put in because you can clearly see how the nuts are aligned in the aluminum bars. Make sure you line up the vent holes in the panels with where your CPU and GPU fans actually are for proper airflow. Each panel is held in place with four screws and four nuts, and once they're in place, the build is complete. So once it's all together, the A30 is actually a really good looking case. I like the colors, I like the design, and importantly, I like how small it is. Now all told, it took me about two hours to put this build together, which is kind of a long process. Most of that time was spent dealing with the nuts, probably 90 plus percent, which is kind of annoying, but the end result does look good enough that I think it's justified. Now my suggestion to Geek here is make the nuts just a little bit wider. If you make them wide enough so that they can't just spin around in the channels in the aluminum, it would save a ton of time on building. All you need to do is change the installation manual to point out where you need to put in the nuts before you start assembling the case so that they're in place once the aluminum is blocked off. That would also make it much easier to maintain the case because the side panels would be way easier to take off. I also think tempered glass side panels would be really cool, but I'm not sure if you can cut vents into tempered glass or if it'll just blow up if you do that. Would be really cool though. Overall, this is a really good looking case. Assembly isn't hard, it just takes a while, and it offers plenty of room for cable management, which is super nice in a build this small. Plus the fact that it can handle GPUs up to 211 millimeters means the majority of graphics cards out there today will fit in this case. And it can handle a two and a half inch and another two and a half inch or three and a half inch drive, which means for the vast majority of people, it can fill all the same practical functions as a full size micro ATX or ATX case. And that's despite being much, much smaller. Just keep in mind that the instructions are good and pretty well annotated, but not completely perfect. So you won't just be able to do this build on autopilot. That said, I think the final result is very well worth it. If you want to pick up an A30 for yourself, a link is in the description below, along with the power supply I use because we know that it fits. Hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of new videos as soon as they're out. So guys, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I want to hear from you. Do you think mini ITX PCs are worth the extra hassle of assembly? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I hope I helped, and I'll see you in the next video. Ugh. It's an 8.3 liter... Uh. Now, one important note... Uh. Now, one important thing to note with a small... F with this, the 830. Jesus. Yay, we're done. That wasn't that bad. That was not bad at all. Only two takes. I'm getting good at this.